Hello everyone, um, Ron Aledo here from Miami. Today I'm going to talk about something that is not related to geopolitics or security or intelligence. Today I'm just going to talk about sport. Because as you well know, uh, one of uh, the passions of my life for the last almost 30 years have been Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and MMA. And some people, I mean, uh, when I go into TV sometimes and when they see me, uh, people see me in, in, in person, they ask me, hey, Ron, well, how do you get the cauliflower ears? What, what happened with your ears? Why are they so weird? How do you get it? Uh, are you a wrestler or what? <laughs> so basically it's because of my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that I have been doing for almost 28, 29 years now, uh, back since the early 90s in time. So I just wanna, wanted to talk about a subject that is not very well understood uh, for practitioners of sports especially judo and jiu-jitsu and it's basically the difference between judo and jiu-jitsu so i'm just going to take a couple minutes to do a fast explanation of what the difference is between what we call brazilian jiu-jitsu and what we call judo so when we talk about judo uh we are talking i'm, I'm talking about i'm defining judo as the sport judo of today okay what we call olympic judo or sport judo the judo that goes to the olympics that judo that most people uh, i mean 95 percent 98 percent of judo practitioners uh, do in a daily basis in a weekly basis in competitions uh, and uh, in europe in the united states and uh, the olympic sport in the Pan Americans and the, the European Championships and Asian Championships, etc. That is the judo that I'm talking about. Okay, I'm not talking about cousin judo. Uh, that is some, something that very few people do. Uh, the green, the team competitions that they still do in Japan. Uh, and I'm not talking about the original judo. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the original judo just to give a historical context. Uh, but I'm not talking about the Kodokan Judo as originally taught uh, in the early 20th century in Japan. Um, it's not that one. And when I'm talking about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm just uh, I'm referring myself to the sport that came from Judo, I mean from the Kodokan Judo, not from the Olympic sport that joined the Olympics on the, in the 60s, but from the original. Uh, Kodokan Judo uh, of the early 20th century, Jigaro uh, Kano, and was transformed, was changed, was modified, uh, methodology was created out of that Judo, and then in Brazil, uh, Carlos Gracie, Helio Gracie, modified the sport, created from the original sport this kind of new approach to Judo that we call Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So a little bit of history, uh, and this I mean this is something that you can look in, into the internet. This is something that there are many videos over there uh, that explain this this subject. But I just want to give my interpretation. Uh, I mean, and it's an interpretation that comes from my old school. Let's call it that, that way of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, me learning uh, from Pedro Valente in Miami. Me learning uh, from uh, uh, Henzo from the Henzo Gracie in New York, from the Gracie Academy back in the 90s in, in, in Torrance, California. And, and my long, long tour of, uh, I mean, my long way of uh, practicing uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo for, for the last 20 years. Uh, I mean, because not, I not only went to Judo schools and Judo, uh, sorry, Jiu Jitsu academies, I also went to Judo academies and Judo clubs. I mean, from uh, everything from uh, I practice at the uh, National Federation of Judo in Puerto Rico. I practice uh, uh, in the Salitre in Bogota, uh, where the National Federation of, of Colombia practice uh, uh, Judo. I practice in uh, Virginia. I practice for several years with my old friend uh, Kai uh, Schumacher in uh, Kranistein in, um, in Germany. So I, pract I practiced over there for several, several years. So I have been practicing in different judo clubs and different, uh, I here too in, in Miami. So I have been 
also getting my knowledge of judo but also my knowledge of jiu-jitsu uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu for many years and my interpretation of this history is that the judo the original judo the kodokan judo that came from japan to brazil remember brazil has a very big uh, wide uh, population of uh, japanese I mean something that is not very normal or usual in the United States. In the United States we have a large Chinese population, but we have a very minuscule, small uh, Japanese population here. I mean immigrants from Japan, that's not something uh, historical here in the United States. The Japanese, especially wealthy and middle class and wealthy Japanese, they prefer to go to South America not to the United States. They thought that the competition here in the United States was too much, too many Irish and Germans and Jewish, and uh, they will not be, it's gonna be a lot of uh, competition here. But if they go to South America, to Peru, if they go to Brazil, uh, they might have an easier path to become the elite of the country. So that's where they went. So back in the, <laughs> back in the, 20, in the early 20th century, we have, uh, for example, Maeda, that's the one that they always call. Uh, but there were other practitioners of Kodokan Judo and other people that live in Brazil, in Japanese masters that live in Brazil. But we have Maeda that came from Japan, that was an original student of Jigaru Kano. And he taught the Gracies, Carlos Gracie, Helio Gracie, and he taught the art of Kodokan Judo. And then at that moment is when Carlos and Helio, mostly Helio, because Helio was the tiniest, the smallest one of, uh, of the brothers, they developed this methodology to adapt the Kodokan Judo mostly to uh, very realistic fights for self-defense, and they adapt the, they created this methodology uh, where a little, small, tiny person like Master Helio can use this Kodokan Judo, original Judo, uh, to uh, to fight and to defeat a lot larger, stronger opponents. And after the modification, the methodology, the structure, uh, they modified the structure of the of the actual judo that they learned. They created this new judo that they call jiu-jitsu. I mean, uh, but remember, do and jitsu is just the way or art. One is the, the way and the other one is the art, but it's basically the same. And remember, at the 20th century, in this uh, first decade of the 20th century, it was interchangeable. Saying Jiu-Jitsu or saying Judo, it was interchangeable. I mean, uh, it, it can say both, okay? And uh, so when, when Kimura came to Brazil, people, some people say, oh, there is a great Judo practitioner. And so other people said, oh, there is a great Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, called Kimura, that is coming here, they were interchangeable. Basically, the, the relationship between Judo and Jiu-Jitsu is that same relationship that we can have here in America between baseball and softball. Or, uh, I mean, uh, if somebody want to take it to a, another level, we, we can say that it might be a little bit like the relationship, a little bit, like uh, rugby, the European rugby, and the American football, <laughs> one is the origin, one is what we in America develop, okay? Uh, or even like soccer, like uh, a soccer, the European soccer and the underground soccer. <laughs> but basically it's the same sport with different approach, different methodologies, different ways of um, actually practicing it. But it's basically the same sport or with the different methodology, different objectives. The Judo of Jigaro Kano, the Kodokan Judo, evolved. Evolved in the contrary direction of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or Gracie Jiu Jitsu, as it's called. Uh, there's a difference between Gracie and, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm going to explain that also later on. But basically, evolved in a different way. While the Gracie brothers, Helio Gracie, developed this realistic self defense style of uh, fighting from that original Kodokan Judo. And the, from there, we, later on, it, it was used, and, and it was the, the heart of the Ballet Tudo, or Everything Goes, 
was here in America, we call it came became uh, decades later uh, MMA, mixed martial arts. Their uh, Olympic, their original judo of Kodakan judo evolved in the contrary direction. It become more, let's call it, civilized. <laughs> While the Brazilian jiu-jitsu became uh, more combative, more realist, uh, oriented to realistic self-defense, to realistic combat, the the judo of Japan became slowly more and more let's call it civilized more sport like until in the 60s it all officially became an olympic sport and ever since it becomes the, the olympic it transformed the sport into something very 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 well designed for sport for competition for tournament and obviously following the pressure of the olympic committee and the olympic community something that remove away all those things that were not perhaps the nicest or more most uh, exciting things to look at uh, it concentrated mostly into a uh, throwing sport 85 percent of olympic sport judo today is just throwing their opponent throwing their opponent trying to get that perfect throw where your back hits the mat perfectly in a perfect synchronization so you can win automatically the match just by a throw no submission no ground fighting if i do a perfect throw i just win and remove dangerous what they consider dangerous uh move what they consider again dangerous uh locks and submissions uh dangerous throws uh they removed that too uh so it became more and more and more let's call it this way i'm sorry i don't this is my personal <laughs> interpretation more soft uh, year after year decade after decade and the contrary happened uh with jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu became the heart of ballet tudo and the heart of mma and uh, obviously very extremely effective in for self-defense what's the difference between gracie jiu-jitsu and brazilian jiu-jitsu well some people just for some people is the same when i say i do gracie jiu-jitsu or i do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Now, at the top of the chain, <laughs> let's call it this way, some of the masters and some of the Brazilians that teach the sport and some of the Brazilians that have been practicing the sport for older, I mean, for decades, uh, they see a difference because they perceive Gracie Jiu Jitsu like the original methodology uh, created by Helio Gracie, the original school uh, textbook, the original self defense. The original uh, tough, manly, you want to call it sport for self-defense, where the little guy uh, defeats the the big guy using technique, using uh, the drone lock manipulation, using the chokes, using the position, using the wear out of your big opponent, uh, getting his uh, uh, his condition to wear out, uh, his uh, stamina to wear out, and then the little guy comes at the end victorious. So that is what some masters consider Gracie Jiu Jitsu, the original methodology, the original uh, school book from Helio Gracie. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, that's more with the Carlos Gracie and the Gracie Barra uh, chain of command, let's call it that way, or, or succession chain. That one is more related to the modifications of the Gracie Jiu Jitsu to convert it also into a sport not judo still ground fighting is the most important still submission is the most important but with more focus in competition more focus in a point system more focus in getting points to win the match and you get the points by either doing a throw either getting a better position, either going to the mouth or knee on the chest or, or uh, an advantage, that approach to the sport. I mean, to Brazilian, to Gracie Jiu Jitsu is what they call Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, to do something more generic. Remember in the old fashioned, old, old, old school uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, there were no points and there were no tournament like, and there were no scores. I mean, you, in Helio Gracie uh, philosophy and, and mindset, you fight to a submission. That's it. Whoever submit the other guy wins. And if there are no submission, then there is a draw. As simple as that. We are going to fight to submit each other. 
if no, and after so many times nobody submits anyone okay then nobody won it's a draw we both lo uh, lost the match okay so that is the philosophy of the original crazy jiu-jitsu the old-fashioned school crazy jiu-jitsu today because they wanted to to do it into a tournaments and they wanted to obviously they cannot fight for 25 or 30 or 50 minutes until somebody submits somebody so they created this regulation of points they created this uh, uh, point system tournament system five minutes whoever have more uh, the, the the better position wins etc etc something the hell really was not really happy about it okay but they accepted because if they want the the, the their art to be competitive they needed to accept those changes. But that's the difference between when they say people Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they're talking most of the sport aspect. When they say great Jiu Jitsu, they're talking more of the self defense aspect of the sport. So basically, we really need to understand the difference between what we call today Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo. Judo, again, you can win by a throw, something impossible in Jiu Jitsu. In Jiu Jitsu, I can throw you 20 times. I'm still, I'm not going to win <laughs> the match automatically. But in Judo, you can do one big throw, one perfect good throw, my, the back lands in a symmetrical way, hit the mat. Okay, I win automatically. Ah, ta da, the winner. Zero ground fighting if that happens. That's it. Uh, so that's something that, that's a key difference that separates Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from Judo. Also in Judo, you only have a few seconds, a few seconds to fight on the ground, to do Neguasa. Because if you go to the Neguasa and a few seconds have passed and the, and the referee, very, very, very terrible rule, if the referee in his subjective opinion thinks that there is not enough action, he just stand you, stand you up, mate, stand up. So that's a terrible frustration for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu people and myself. When we go to do judo, we want to go to the ground. Okay, now, finally, I'm in the ground. Now I'm going to fight. And then the referee is, Mate, up. Oh, what the hell? I'm just beginning to <laughs> I'm just beginning to work. But well, that is a reality. Okay, and obviously, you have the, the wasari, we have the koki, the, where the throw is not perfect, but if you do a couple of those, you win. And also, you have the osaikomi, you have the pin, the 25 seconds pin. If you... In judo, if you pin my shoulders to the ground, 25 seconds, I lost. In jiu-jitsu, you can pin me for half an hour. I don't care. <laughs> you can pin me for, for for one hour. I do not care. I, I am not losing for pin. There are no, uh, uh, you cannot lose a match because your, your opponent pinned your shoulders to the ground. That doesn't happen in jiu-jitsu. In jiu-jitsu, still, the most important thing, the most important thing that separates and that decides the fight is the submission. The submission is king in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Gracie Jiu Jitsu. In Judo, uh, the throw is king. And people ask me who is better? Who can who can win a fight between a Judo guy and a Jiu Jitsu guy, uh, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy? Listen. The answer is very simple most of the time. Obviously, this is not. There are exceptions, okay? There are exceptions of the rule, but obviously, the judo guy, the judo practitioner, the judo black belt is always going to throw the black, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy to the ground. They always going to accomplish the throw. They say on oh, They are, the, they are going to throw the the any throw. They all go whatever, okay? They are going to do uh, the throw. Why? Because judo guys, they spend 85% of their time practicing throws. That's what they do. If you spend 85% of all the time you train doing one thing, you're going to become very good at that one thing. And one thing that the judo guys practice 85, 90% of the time, and sometimes, I mean, with the exception of some schools here and there, is throwing, throwing, throwing. That's their bread and butter. That's a, a nuts and bolts. Throwing and throwing. So most likely, there is a big chance the odds are in the favor of that the judo guy will come with the jiu-jitsu guy and throw the jiu-jitsu guy. That's what they do, what the Japanese masters did to, uh, to Helio Gracie. Throw him. But in the same, flipping the coin, there is a big chance, not always, of course, but there is a big chance that the Brazilian jiu-jitsu black bear uh, practitioner that have been practicing for years will 
submit and win in the round against the judo guy. Not because the judo guy don't do neguasa, they do neguasa. Some of them are specialists in neguasa. That's why I said not all the time, but most of the time. But the thing is that the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy, they live on the ground. They, we spend 80, 90, 95% of our times on the ground. We do a few throws here and there once in a while to warm up. And then the rest of the time that we train, we are in the ground practicing submissions. That's all we do. Submission, 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 survival. And that is the, the main difference. So obviously, and we have, obviously, if we go with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu rules, then we can do calf lysers, and we can do knee bars, and we can do ankle locks, and we can do stuff that the judo guy have no idea of how to defend. So that's also very, very, very important to keep in mind. So each sport, I mean, you can do cross training, of course. A Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy can do cross training with the judo guys, like I have been doing for many, many years. But you need to understand, most likely, like they do to me, I'm going to be throw again and again and again and again. Okay, so that be prepared for that. The judo guys, you can go to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and cross train with us, of course. Uh, but be ready to relearn and rethink your ground fighting, your neguasa. Remember, we don't do the, the turtle position. That's the bread and butter of the judo neguasa, the turtle position. And we seldom, very, very seldom do the turtle position like defending ourselves with our bellies to the ground. We don't do that in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's almost suicidal because uh, in a competition, in a, a good person who knows the, the sport will jump over your back and will fight for it and will choke you out and will get the, the mount position and will put the hooks and you're out. But in Judo, that's their bread and butter, the, the turtle position. So the, we do the guard. That's the difference. Well, the main difference between jiu-jitsu neguasa and judo neguasa where the judo neguasa guys they do the turtle position the brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner we do the guard that's how we fight in the ground even though i don't care if i'm pinned i don't care i want to face my opponent uh, chest to chest face to face so that's a, something very different that people have to keep in mind so yes you can do cross training it's better it's very good for a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy to go to a Judo guy and learn some tricks and some throws that most likely, most likely, not always of course, but most likely and most of the uh, Jiu Jitsu uh, instructors out there are not that familiar with. And of course, it's good for a Judo guy to cross train and come to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, club and learn some new version, new vision of Neguasa or ground fighting that they perhaps don't have in their judo uh, dojo. So I'm gonna keep talking. I'm gonna keep talking more about this because it is a passionate subject, and I'm practicing here in Miami since many years with my old friend uh, Pedro Valente. And obviously, I was in and out because of my military career in Germany and in Colombia and in Texas and in Virginia and in Washington D.C. for many many years. But I always came here to Miami to my origins. Of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I'm not going to keep talking about this for those who are interested about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, MMA and fighting. Thank you very much. Ronald Edo from Miami.